Hi folks, Thomas Hinson here with thomashinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question, I thought I would kind of take a topic that I've seen and keeps coming up in some of my videos and really kind of dig down into it. So maybe this is going to be a multi-part series, but we're going to talk about starting a blog to kind of build your brand as a data engineer, data scientist, or hey, if you're watching this and you're just a technologist or you know somebody that just, just wants to do book reviews, trust me, there's gonna be some topics in here that are kind of generalized for everybody, but it really shows you how to key in on your field. So before we jump into that though, I wanna say if you have any questions, put them in the comment section here below. This is where I find content to kind of make sure I'm interacting with the community and you know answering the questions that you want. And it also gives me an idea, it's like, hey, if there's enough people that ask a question, or interested in a certain topic and I haven't done any research on it, gives me an opportunity to study and see, you know, kind of what's going on. So this is all about being a community here. So reach out to me on thomashenson.com forward slash big questions if uh, you don't want to put it in the comment section here below, but I'll do my best to answer those as quick as I can. So today I want to talk about really, you know, why you should start a blog as a data engineer or data scientist, or I mean, if you're a web developer and you're watching this or anything, I think it's very important. So in 2019, should you start a blog? I think so. I, I don't think that it's something that is going away. So in, in just because I say start a blog, you don't have to start a blog and just write, you know, you can, you can start a vlog, right? But I, I think you definitely should have your own domain, right? Like, you know, I, I bought thomashenson.com. It cost me like, I think $12 a month. No, no, $12 a year, but it's like, you know, hosting and everything like that can be can be re really, really, you know, cheap. So, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that. I think it's really important. So, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit first about my journey and kind of why I started a blog. When I got my first job, like I said, I've talked about it before, I was a web developer. One of the things um, where I was working at, we weren't really embracing, we were using open source, but we weren't really contributing. And, you know, it was really kind of shunned upon or, you know, kind of shot upon, you know, for us to actually have any code to be able to show or anything like that. And so one of the things, you know, I, I didn't really think about it at the time, um, but, you know, you get, you get, you get a couple years into your role and, you know, you might get opportunities for, to you know, have interviewed other places and do other things, and one of the things that came up that you know was really a hole whenever I was going to the interview process was, you know, I didn't have any example code or anything like that that I could show. I wasn't involved in the open source community outside of work, and I didn't you know didn't have my code. It was my company's property, and there were some other other pretty big reasons why I couldn't uh, why, why I didn't have anything that I could point to and show. But so that really kind of got me thinking. It's like, man, I don't have anything that really captures kind of the work and some of the things that I do. And then at this time too, you know, I'd already kind of embraced the um, trying to do at least 30 minutes a day or, you know, maybe even four times a week getting 30 minutes in of learning new things. And so, you know, I had, had all these, all these ideas and all these things that I was kind of going through and learning on the process, but I could only talk about them, right? If, you know, I'm on a whiteboard or, you know, from, from my resume perspective, but it didn't really, couldn't really show, right? It couldn't, couldn't let it stand on its own. And so that's where I started really looking into blogging. And I was like, man, you know, maybe I should start a blog. Well, start a blog, didn't really know what I was going to do with it, right? <laughs> like if you, if you go back and look at some of my early posts, it was like, you know, I'm doing this and I'm, you know, doing, I'm, I'm starting a business. And it really wasn't a business. It was just, you know, me, me kind of writing. So um, as I kind of started writing, I started talking about some of the things I've learned. So, you know, I, I would go through and look, look and be able to, you know, create articles around something that I've learned, maybe even create some test projects. Um, but you know, a lot of that, you know, they weren't very good when I started, right. And, and, and can be, uh, <laughs> it can be an opinion thing if they're good now, but I definitely know that I've improved and I, and, and I feel like that, but, uh, I think it's something that really kind of helped me and really, really focused me too. You know, like I said, I was a web developer. Um, but you've all heard my story before about when I became a data engineer and kind of jumped into the Hadoop area. I kind of had that platform and I'd already been practicing doing some, doing some of the blogging and stuff like that. So it was really easy for me as I was going through and learning and, and learning things that other people wanted to see um, to be able to start writing, you know, Pig Latin tutorials, right? And Hive and, you know, what I'm doing with HBase and HDFS and just general tips of things that I learned. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like strengthening that muscle. And then, you know, it really helped me kind of just accelerate just in, you know, being a part of the community as well too. So um, that, you know, that's kind of my journey. That's, you know, one of the, one of the main reasons that I'm so big on it is because like I came from that area where, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't have anything that I could point to and say, hey, these are all the cool things that I'm doing. So that's why I started a blog, but why do I think that you should and kind of what should your story be? Um, your story, you're still writing it, right? But I think you should write it on a blog. <laughs> but I really think that, you know, it's something that'll kind of help you, you know, build out your brand. And I think it's always something good that shows, one, you're interactive in the community, right? And, you know, it gives you, kind of keeps you honest and keeps you, you know, motivated too, right? Like, you know, it's, it's late at night. I didn't really want to I didn't really want to have to record any videos. I, you know, I wanted to kind of put it off, but you know, I, I have an audience here, right? I have, I have a schedule and I, and I try to keep, you know, content coming out. So this, this made me come, you know, come, come out to the office and make sure that, you know, I got on camera and, and was able to create content here too. So the same thing with your blog, you know, like if you create a blog, say you create a schedule and you're like, Hey, I mean, I've done this before. I'm going to publish once every, once every month, right? Like when I was first starting out, man, you feel, you feel horrible when you don't, like I missed quite a few months. I mean, it took me a long time before I published like every month, you know, I just really wasn't consistent, but it'll keep you honest about learning. It'll keep you honest about, you know, creating content and being a part of that community too. So I, I really think that it, it's, it's good at any stage in your career, but especially if you're watching this channel and you're trying to figure out, okay, where do I get started? What are some things that I should be doing? You've probably heard me say it a, a ton of times, start creating something right to be a part of the community. And I'm not saying go out and, and you know, um, we'll, we'll have a longer session about how to start blogging and how to find con you know, how to create your own content. So I'm not saying go out and, you know, borrow people's content or anything like that and, and put it as your own. There's a different, definite way that you can do, you know, a lot of different things. So, um, so I guess I'm going to end this video this time, but maybe this is, we'll just call this part one, because I definitely think that we should dig into, you know, kind of how to start that blog, some content ideas. But I think today just kick around the idea, just think about it. Start, start churning, start, start kicking those around in your idea. And then we'll talk and kind of follow up later on with um, some content ideas. And I'll show you, you know, how to set up on, I think, I, you know, I use DreamHost, but there's, there's a ton of other places out there. But it's, it's really something simple that you can set up in 10 minutes. And, you know, if you're using WordPress, you can, you can start publishing some of your own content, having your own audience. Heck, you can put it in the comment section here below to kind of build. And, you know, we can, we can use our audience to, to help everybody kind of, you know, push their content out there. We can all kind of support each other as well too. So um, that's all I have for today. Like I said, I'm going to follow up. I, I really like this, uh, really like this idea here, but if you have some comments or you think it's a bad idea to start a blog in 2019, which I don't think it is. So, but uh, I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, all opinions are welcome. So um, thanks again. And I will see you next time on big data, big questions.